Larry Alkins. Um, <clears throat> I want to read this to you. Uh, I think it'll help us with what's going on here in America. The three-step process I came up with. The first is so very important. It's almost, you can't do anything else without doing the first one. So if I may, I'll read, read this off to you. As I look around, I see that my fellow American patriots are now ready to pay the ultimate price to defend our freedoms from this unchecked, reckless, and dangerous government. I know that this must not happen. For this reason, not one minute should be wasted getting started. A new era is coming, and it must start in America first. <clears throat> I say, let us not just wish for a better future for our children, but let us rapidly advance America so we can live in now and guarantee a better future for our children. No more will we be victimized. We will not renounce our freedoms. I tell you, our path is love. But this time we will not put down our arms just to be led to the slaughter. This time we will protect ourselves and we will prevail. We do not fear the well-armed righteous man, but it is wise to fear the well-armed wicked man, which has murdered the faithful and unarmed by the millions. But not this time. Our path and our power is love, the unifying power of love. Our goal is to never, never bring harm to not one soul, neither yours nor ours. You see, this time we are awake and we have the will. Our plan is multi-pronged and multi-dimensional. Only through love can we enter into this new world, this world that is inevitable in its existence. This will happen whether we wait until it collapses upon us before starting anew, or if we awaken our conscience in enough time to pass over peacefully what I call an awareness bridge, to the new world where Jesus came back as promised in the hearts of every person so he could bring heaven here on earth. You see, of course, we must stop these politicians from destroying us. We must, and we must do that this election. But first, we must face ourselves. To see who we have become, we must realize that we are created to be much better than we have been led to believe. We are not the conquered. We are the divine's most precious creations. In the higher teachings, it is well known that we are part of the divine. We are part of a whole. We, are, we have a unique relationship with the divine. It is said that we are expressions of God or the divine which are broad terms to describe the one source in which we pray in our own way to the infinite, the Creator. It is taught that He lives vicariously through us. In the beginning, God told all the angels to bow before man, and this is how precious we truly are. This is why it is vital that the first step is to find our inner connection with God in any form that we reach for it and understand how precious we truly are. Understand that we are meant for some, so much more. <clears throat> Learn to love your precious self and in any form and in any way you are now at this very moment. Understand that it is not your fault how you are. Truly look at yourself and forgive everything you hold on to because you are precious. Once you love yourself and can direct your entire being into living with this love, then we can love others and everything else too. We will learn to care for each other in a way that we care for ourselves. Love for each other helps us, bring, helps us break the chains that hold us bondage. Jesus preached about the one source to eternal love, eternal life, and to have heaven here on earth. And that source is love. Love is oneness. Love is the, the divine vibration. Oneness is our goal. Therefore, separation is how we live today and is the source of our stagnation, our illness, and our death. Love, we kind of understand. 
but oneness and separation is as hard to explain as polar opposites are, which is also necessary to understand love, true love. To get to oneness, we must identify the shells of separation that we create to identify ourselves. These shells are what keeps us from oneness. I'd like to show you this picture that I have that I created. The wind will take it away from me right now. This is the picture that I drew of the awareness bridge. And on this side we see all the destruction, the forced economic collapse that's happening right now, the deteriorating educational system, extreme job loss, mass immigration, new illnesses, you know, all these are different things that are crushing this world right now. And either it's either we're gonna kill ourselves by this point or we're gonna or the earth is gonna shake itself and cleanse its own self because of the darkness we put in it. This is the awareness bridge to come over peacefully to where everything is now new and and <clears throat> and is starts off with the love for each other, love for education, health, every single thing that there is. This is a whole new realm of existence that we've never seen before. This is the old and that's why it's crushing down. I have another picture that I have here of how of how we are right now. This is the, the shells that separate us. Each one of these lines is a shell. Some of us have hundreds and hundreds of shells that separate us and it keeps us separate, separate from each other. So we'll never ever see that we are one and the same. And these shells are like my name, separate myself, my religion, my sexual orientation, my racial background, my political belief, my country's allegiance, financial status, my sports, my racial biases, etc. These are all the things that keeps us from being one with God. <clears throat> this is what we're supposed to look like. With no restraints on us whatsoever. Only with connection to the divine and spreading out the energies, the expressions through energy throughout the whole entire world of our love. This picture right here is the Adam Cadman. It is the form of man that Michael and Satan are fighting over. In figure one, we see our present form as Satan is winning, but Michael and his angels will prevail and we will be free to enjoy heaven here on earth. This is how our soul and everything is supposed to be. And this is how our, our soul is trapped now. And it says, see, it says by the, they don't teach us about our self-image, so we're always jealous and prejudiced. The news industry always keeping us at a low vibration by showing all the crime and rape and suffering. The lack of education hurts us that we don't, you know, limited option, limited skill, limited understanding, no hope, no jobs, no invention, dependency. Of course, you could just read all the rest of these. And these are all the reasons why we're connected. This is where we need to get to. Thank you. These shells cocoon us in a way that it can be impossible to see that you and I are the same. The more shells that we put on ourselves, the more separate, the more we separate ourselves from each other. As we begin to remove these shells one by one, we get to a point where we can see that I am you and you are me. It's just that you, as being a part of me, raised differently and seeing the world in a beautifully different way, but still being the same, a creation and an expression of God. These shells allow us to hate, to be jealous of, or don't want to be a part of. These shells are self-imposed and can only be removed by you. Besides these shells of separation, there are a whole other host of re restraints that the elite has learned to keep us separated, stagnated, suppressed, and easy to sway at their will. But it is our shells that keep us from becoming one with all. Once we remove these shells, we can see how beautiful and powerful we truly are. Then we can easily free ourselves from these outward restraints and become the true creations of God. Unlimited and ruler of our domain, self-rulers with the Christ, with the Christed heart and a true connection with our God. Now for the polar opposites, good, bad, up, down, on, off, black, and white. 
we know that we can't have one without the other. The reason is because they are just polar opposites of each other. They are both part of the same whole. Let me explain briefly. If you knew and saw only white people and a black man walked into town, you would be shocked. But then you would see that he is black and only then you would realize that you are white and how different he was. But the truth is, we are the same people, just the opposite side of the spectrum of skin color of humanity. They are all part of the whole, the all of God. Once we understand, once we all can understand this, we can find oneness. And there we will find the power of true love that is needed to bring the change to guarantee the brighter future for our children, which is so rightfully ours, all of ours. This brings us to the secret game that the elite uses to control us. The secret game we all play is called the game of black or white. We are taught at an early age that black or white must win and one must lose. That is, that is taught in many aspects of life, like right and wrong, good, guns and no guns, my God and your God. This game is what keeps us from uniting and becoming one. You see, they got us good. Without teaching us about our spiritual self, we never know about the truth. The truth that we are all one, expressions of God, beautiful in our uniqueness and powerful in our oneness with the divine. Instead of oneness through love that Jesus taught, we are taught how we are separated from each other and one must win. This is the game of black or white. Democrats or Republicans must win, but neither help us. My religion must win and all others must lose and perish. It is a terrible game we play. A game not taught by Jesus, but taught and spread by man. Men who knew that if they do not teach the masses about their true power by making it taboo or evil and by neglecting to teach them about protecting their emotions, then these elite men can easily move the masses in any directions they need at their moment. It is the weak and unprotected emotions that allow us to play this game of black or white unknowingly. By putting side by side the holy teachings of Jesus, and the polar opposite of what has been handed down to us for over 2,000 years, it is clear that we have been led astray. Jesus would have never taught us about the game of black or white. He would have taught us that black is white, that there is no difference, for they are the same, the creations and expressions of the divine. It is clear that we have to start by loving ourselves. Then, with that love, reach out to others. This is how it starts. It is the only way that it can start. We don't have the luxury of time to do this vital step to oneness. But my friends, we do have one advantage unseen by the game masters of black and white. And that advantage is that no one has to win or lose like they'd like us to think. Through God, in any form, we know Him. And in any way that, we, that He calls to us is the love that is needed. No way is wrong because we are all God's children. Black is white and white is black. Neither has to win. It is man led by Satan that says, Believe this way or you will go to hell. This is hatred in its purest form. The doctrine of separation by bringing the religious away from each other by damning all other forms of his creation. But love is the unifying power of God where each of us can be saved. We already know love and we already know the love of our God through the religion we have now. We don't need one perfect religion to find God because God has already revealed himself to us in a way that we can understand and relate to him. There is no wrong way towards God. Together we will gather the light from all around the world and direct them all to the divine. This is what is needed to free ourselves from the bondage and 
free ourselves from the bondage and allows us to rise above the game of black or whites. We have, we have to reconstitute our covenant with our God and follow the teachings and actions of Jesus or any ascended master of light that relates to you best. Then, remove all aspects of control and obedience to man other than being a servant to our fellow man. This way each of us will have the vehicle of love to bring heaven here on earth. The unification of God by the whole of his people is what's needed now. Our country is collapsing from the weight of our darkness and our distance from the divine. Only through divine love for ourselves and each other can we break the mighty chains of Satan that holds us in this downward spiral of death. Only for Satan to give everything to the few who abide by his evil doctrine of separation. Once we learn to love ourselves, then we can love the whole. Not just from our own small perspective of love viewed from our own separation, but through the view of the divine and the love for each other. You see, my beloveds, once we can love each other, then we can fight for each other. This brings us to step two of three. Elections are coming up this November 2014, and the recapture of our authority over our government must start now. The ironic question is, do we vote for Democrats or Republicans? We all know the definition of insanity, but year after year, we wish that doing the same thing will bring a different result. This November will be different. We have learned how to remove our separations and why we should. So this election and the elections henceforth will never be seen with closed eyes or through the eyes of separation, but with the eyes of love for each other. Step two denounces insanity and regains our authority over our government. This is going to be called the great mix-up. No Republicans or Democrats up for election shall be re-elected. Every seat shall change hands. This strategic movement is, movement is not the change in itself, but it is done to stop their momentum and give us the time to assemble and to gather our momentum and to empower and reach every American individual. This will, we will all learn to be the kings and queens of our great nation. We will learn to take control over our government and to make, make it finally work for us. The attacks on our constitution and our liberties are coming to an end by the hands of the sole proprietor of American freedom, the mighty American individual. Step three will be, will be revealed upon the completion of step one and two. Our goal is not to fight the existing power. Our goal is to make it irrelevant. I am Larry Alkins, and I hope that you understand what I'm trying to tell you. We must first learn to love ourselves, and only by loving ourselves can we reach out and love each other. And only by reaching out and loving each other can we unite and fight for each other, fight for what Jesus has always been trying to work for us, as we're always trying to bring here on earth, heaven here on earth. So I hope this helps. God bless America.